You know, it's almost like your birthday with a package from China, so let's go. So in this video, let's do a quick unboxing and of course talk about what we can do with it. So this device is capable of running arcade, Game Boy Advance, Super Famicom, Sega and NES game series. And comes with a 2.8 inch that is basically a very tiny IPS display. That has a resolution of 960 by 480. This thing is in full view and that's something we'll see. Then we're going to get an external 80 million battery that maintains around 8 hours. I'm curious how that will work out because most of the time depending how you how you will play it, like depending like the brightness and stuff like that. Ultra large capacity support the EVE card, yeah right. The question remains, what can we do with it? Because that is always the question. So we have seen this handheld before on the channel in a different form factor. And that's the thing what you're going to get with Aliexpress. So this handheld has potential, I can already tell you that. I've reviewed it in a previous episode, but it also came with a different name. We're going to get shoulder buttons at the back, and I must say like the form factor, it's not the best. Like when you're holding it, I need to cramp up my fingers to, and my hands like to get it in the right position. But for small hands, it will be more comfortable. So the first thing I really love about it is the D-pad. It feels very nice. We're going to get two clicks button in the middle, select start, A, B, X, Y over here. So that's it. Turning it on, you need to press it here at the left. There is also vibration in the inside. I think you cannot really hear it. Let's turn it on. So that is a feature you didn't see back in the day. The DF card is over here. At the bottom we're going to get the audio jack and then type C for charging. And here we're going to get the volume control. At the back, here we're going to get ourselves the BP5L. It's kind of a weird story with this battery. If you can try to search it, in my opinion, it's very difficult to find. So, it's kind of weird that they're still selling it, so there needs to be somewhere on Alibaba somewhere they need to be selling these batteries if you want to have a replacement. And also, we're going to open up later on in the video, but here you can see the RG99 version number one has been created in 2019, so this thing is already a couple of years old when making this video. Alright, so let's turn it on. Ooh, vibration. Hmm. So, first impression, the display. Full view, IPS. Mm. Okay, so a little bit of a bummer with this device is that it comes with this very weird interface. So this thing doesn't run on open dingo, so we have seen before. So we have seen it before with different handles back in the day, like mini arcade machines, and what you can do basically is play some games. Any games, they say it's possible, but it's going to be quite challenging. It does have some built-in games, but if they are played properly, that is something we need to try out. But you can see like the list is quite long. A lot of different games. So they were not lying about the compatibility with some systems. But what are we going to get more in the package? Because that is always the question. Oh, we're going to get ourselves a very nice cable. And it's the right one, the Type-C. So we're going to get a very nice manual. Not like the basic toilet paper ones we have seen before. Just going to see here. With some explanation how everything works, manual is very extended. I love it. So they did an amazing job with that one. Okay, so first off, let's try the MAME. And you can see, like, the display looks amazing. Like, it's very colorful, so that is not a lie at all. At the front, we're going to get ourselves the tiny speaker that is also very nice. Alright, so that's maximum volume. Oh, let's put it too loud. But you can hear the crackling noise. So when it comes to the audio, they completely messed it up. Oh boy. See, this is the thing that I really hate about these devices. When you're picking it up, you think, oh, it looks nice. But the end result is that we're going to get some crappy software that basically makes the audio of main program awful. I love to be beefcake man and beat you all up. Yeah. Say hello to my little friends. Mm. Mm. Oh crap. <laughs> wow. Look at it, like it's all messed up over here. But let's just play the game. The audio is already messed up too.
Wow. Okay, there was like a difference between the audio levels. So we need to crank it up. We see a lot of glitching going on. So I don't know what kind of emulator they're running, but how can you freaking mess up Super Famicom? Wow. You can mess it up big time. You can see it over here. <laughs> Look at our like health bars. There's nothing happening there. Wow, this game is absolutely messed up. Did it just froze or? All right, so let's try the Sega Mega Drive edition. I still have those pricked up annoying controls, but the problem is like I need to get used to controls again. Yeah, the audio is messed up, but actually this game is playable. Compared with the previous one, that was like completely messed up. See, this thing that I really don't get with these devices. Why can they not like make something that is actually working? Just want to do a quick game just to see what happens when we're trying to play some Street of Rage. Oh, oh man, this sounds horrible. Okay, let's hear that sound. Hmm, that didn't really sound that bad. So again, like another Mega Drive 16-bit game, it's actually like playable on this freaking device. But the weird thing is like the games that you can see are on this device, you cannot really remove them. So you're stuck with the crap that doesn't work at all. <laughs> 